Hey guys, welcome to another episode today with in Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland. I really like this trendy airport. So on the outside, you've got these bold writing that says Edinburgh in case you're wondering if you're at the right airport. So there's two forms of transport to get to this city centre. You got the tram or you can take the bus. In my case, I took the bus and there's a bus 100 that takes you all the way to Princess Street which is the heart of the new town and it takes approximately 30 minutes. So Edinburgh's got two sides. You've got the new town and then you've got the old town. So the bus takes you right in the middle of the new town called Princess Street. Or you can get off at West End. So the new town is very different to the old town. It's very modern, you've got your high street shops. Um, so if you're into your shopping, this is definitely the place to be. It's also got a lot of students, a lot of tourists as well, so it's a very, very busy, crowded area. Um, so the Edinburgh New Town was built in stages between 1767 and 1850. It still retains its neoclassical and Georgian architecture. If you look on the other side, you can see the Edinburgh Castle and it's separated by the Princess Street Gardens. So if you walk down these steps and you look to your left, you can see the castle and it's a nice park, it's a very, very nice place to chill as well, especially when the weather's nice. So I stepped over into the old town, I kept on seeing this dog everywhere. This dog is so iconic, you'll see him in the shops, you see him on t-shirts. So I asked one of the locals what's so special about this dog. So this dog is called Greyfriars Bobby. Greyfriars Bobby is a Sky Terrier known in the 19th century in Edinburgh for spending 14 years guarding the graveside of his own until he died on the 14th of January 1872. The story continues to be well known in Scotland through several books and films. Legend has it that if you touch his nose, you'll get good luck and that's why it's all rubbed out, but the locals absolutely hate it. So I'm standing in the Old Town, a place called Grass Market Square. So this is the Old Town. So Edinburgh's got two parts. You've got the Old Town and you've got the New Town. So as you can see, it's very medieval and the buildings are very historic. Okay, so if you're staying in the Old Town, you wake up in the morning and you're wondering, where should I eat breakfast? What should I get? Right, I'm going to introduce you guys to the Castle Gate Cafe. Hey guys, come with me to explore this nice cafe in the heart of the Old Town Grass Market Square. So Castlegate Cafe, in my opinion, has to be the best cafe I've ever been to. So just before you go in, you've got some nice pastries on display. And this place is still new, it's only four months old and they're doing big things. When you come inside, it might look small but it's nice and cosy. It can get very, very busy, so make sure you give yourself enough time before you get here. The staff are super friendly. I met the two owners, really cool guys, serving some nice fresh food. So the full Scottish menu came with two fried eggs, some hash brown, some mushrooms, tomatoes, some turkey bacon, some toast, some haggis. I'm gonna explain what haggis is. You have to try haggis when you come to Scotland. So later on, I'm gonna explain in depth what haggis is. I also ordered some hot chocolate, which was really, really nice. I actually give these guys a thumbs up really really nice and I highly recommend the price was very reasonable as well and as you can see the food was banging the presentation was different I highly recommend this place once again I'm going to put the details in the description so Castlegate Cafe in my opinion has to be the best place that I've ever been to for breakfast as you can see I was really enjoying myself and I think I gave them a thumbs up again <laughs> As you can see, the weather's not too great. It's still raining. I'm in a place called Hunter Square. Next stop, I want to try some haggis. So one of my subscribers challenged me to eat some haggis, yeah? So we're going to go in to this place called Piper's Rest. It's a pub and they, send, they sell some nice food there. So we're going to go in, we're going to order some haggis. When I start eating, I'm going to describe exactly what haggis is. So I want to say a big shout out to Gavin Watt who recommend this place off Facebook. Piper's Rest is located at Hunter Square, just off the Royal Mile. They serve single malt whiskey, craft beer, and some nice fun cocktails. They also sell some nice traditional Scottish dishes. So today I'm gonna try some haggis, nips, and tatties. So as you can see, this place has that traditional Scottish vibe. The staff were really friendly as well. I spoke to them about the place and they said that it's just been refurbed. They're open seven days a week and they do live bands. So if you're into live bands, this is a really cool place to hang out if you're in the Royal Mile area in the Old Town. So 
So haggis is a traditional dish most people either love or hate, given its unique list of ingredients. Haggis is usually made by sheep's heart, liver and lungs. And mixed with some onions, oatmeal, spices. It's then soaked in stock and then boiled in sheep's stomach. So haggis is normally served alongside nips and tatties. So nips is basically mashed turnips and then tatties is mashed potatoes. It also comes with whiskey sauce. So whiskey sauce is basically um, whiskey cooked down with um, beef stock and it's really nice. I absolutely really enjoyed it. There's a typical traditional dish that anyone must try if they're ever in Scotland. In my opinion, the taste was gamey, very bearable, but I highly recommend that you have to try this when you're in Scotland. Okay, so after that haggis, I really needed a drink and someone recommended the last drop. So the last drop is highly recommended, very popular, and it's in the Grass Market Square in the Old Town. So when you come in, it might look small, but it's got a friendly family vibe and people are really cool inside. Um, someone recommended I'll try some single malt whiskey. So word of advice, when you're pronouncing it or spelling it, it's with a K-Y and not with an E-Y. So one of the bar staff recommended this particular one. Um, I'm gonna put the name on the screen. It's really nice. It's got a vanilla flavor, very smoky and very smooth. So after that whiskey, I really need the dessert and I found this place called Mary's Milk Bar. This place is amazing. You see that queue? That queue gets a mile long and I'm not even lying. That goes to how nice the ice creams are. So a little bit of background, Mary's Milk Bar is a cozy space where you can enjoy the best quality gelato and chocolate. Mary, the owner, makes the ice cream every morning until 11am so they're always fresh, ever changing flavours to sample. This also means that the choice of flavours change every single day and they sell out really quick in the summer so make sure you guys come early, allow yourself enough time to join those skis. Alright, so Mary worked as a chocolatier but I wanted to learn something new so she trained in Italy um, at one of the universities. I think it was called the Capigiana Gelato University. Not everyone can say they're a Gelato graduate, but Mary is definitely, definitely a graduate when it comes to Gelatos, all right? So guys, when you're in Edinburgh, the old town Grass Market Square, I highly, highly recommend this place. The ice cream is so rich, quality, when I say quality, this is definitely the best ice cream I've ever had. I think I had a nice ice cream when I was in Madrid, but this one has to be hands down the best one I've ever tried. So big shouts going to Mary, keep making them ice creams. For my next stop, I decided to venture to the suburbs of Edinburgh. So I took the 35 bus outside the Scottish Parliament a 30 minute ride to a place called Leith. So Leith is a port area in the north of Edinburgh, found at the mouth of the water Leith. So during the bus ride, I noticed most of the local areas look similar to the London neighborhoods. I will advise when you're in Edinburgh, don't just stay in the old and new town, get a bus or a train ride to the several neighboring towns. So as you arrive to Leith, you can't help but notice the nice scenery with the seafronts and the town seemed very laid back as well. So as I'm into seafood, my friend recommend I try some Cullen Skink from any pub. So I found this place called Ship on the Shore. Very different to the pubs I went to, a bit fancy. And the menu was really out my street with lots of seafood. So I ordered some Cullen Skink for starters. So Cullen Skink is a thick Scottish soup made of smoked haddock, potatoes and onions. Very popular amongst the Scots. I also had some hot smoked sandwich. Guys, I'll tell you what, the Cullen Skink was really nice. I highly recommend if you're into your seafood, if you're into your fish, if you're into your soup, you have to try Cullen Skink. And the sandwiches was beautiful, man. Really nice on some malted brown bread. I had some chips with it as well. Really nice. So my final verdict of Ship on the Shore. I absolutely loved it. The food was nice. The Cullen Skink was really nice. My first time trying it, I really enjoyed it. I'd definitely give these guys a thumbs up. So if you're in Edinburgh and you're feeling for some nice seafood, Definitely get on that 35 bus to Leith and check out the ship on the shore.